Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 56. This is Twip. Hey folks, welcome back to another This Week in Photo or Twip Pro Photo Critique. I'm here once again with my good friend and partner in crime, Mr. Troy Miller, to talk to you about some of the latest submissions that have been put into the Twip Pro community. Hey Troy, what's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm I'm hanging out at WPPI, waiting for the rest of the world to show up. I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say, where are the cabinets at? Where's the cabinets? Where's the cat? Where are the cat treats? Where's the Enterprise? I don't see any of that cool. I know, I know. <laughs> it's so barren in here, you know. You could have brought your cat. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he might have liked that. He might have liked it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Well, a couple of cool things. So you're in Vegas. I'll be in Vegas tomorrow. It is as we record this. It is Monday, February 25th. I'll be there the 26th um, through the first through Friday the first, March 1st. And I will be for folks who are attending WPPI. I will be in the uh, Panasonic booth, sort of doing the MC stuff there for all the Panasonic ambassadors that are presenting. And uh, also showing off the new Panasonic mirrorless cameras. Troy will be a fanboy over there lurking around the Nikon <laughs> booth at the same time. <laughs> right? Or, you know, maybe you'll come over to the dark side. You'll come over to the Panasonic booth and fall in love with one of, those, one of the yeah. uh, S1 cameras yeah. or something. I'll walk through the booth. I'll come say hi. You'll walk through? <laughs> yeah, that may be heresy. But we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun in Vegas. Yeah. I'm really I'm looking forward to it. I am already packed and ready to go. And and I'm checked in. My flight is out of Oakland tomorrow, and it uh, departs at, what is it, 11.45? 11.45 today, 24 hours prior, I checked in. So I'm, nice. <laughs> I'm in the A-series nice. on Southwest. How's that? <laughs> you know what's so funny about that? The, uh, you know, I was sitting there literally hitting, hitting reload because I'm like, I want to do an experiment. I want to see, you know, if it, is it really true if I, if I, if I check in within a minute of the 24 hour window opening, will I get a one or at least a one through 20 or something? I'm still a 47. And it was, <laughs> and I checked in at the minute I was still in the, it was 1145. It was in the 1145 minute I checked in. So I'm thinking that, you know, they sell those slots out for people that upgrade to business select and all that stuff. So probably, yeah, they settle those aside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. But anyway, I'll be there. Checked in, ready to go. So, twit people, if you're there, hang out, reach out to us, and uh, you know, we'll we'll uh, go have a drink or something. Yeah, yeah. I've been chatting with Esteban. He's coming in tomorrow. Cool. So, and I think Chris is on his way. So, yeah, yeah. yeah whoever's here, hit us up. You know, uh, reach out to us in private chat on Twit for sure. Yep. Yeah. No. Excellent. And the other cool thing about this particular episode of the photo critique is that this is a themed photo critique. Yes. Right. What was our theme? Mood, um, motion, and emotion. Yeah. Mood and emotion. So, emotion. so we're gonna go through the the submissions. There are like fifteen or sixteen in there. Um. And but some of them are not in the mood or emotion category. I'm still given a grace period. So we're not gonna not look at the ones that weren't in the <laughs> mood or emotion category. But uh, you know, the we encourage you to submit images along the lines of the critique topic. Next week's topic is Troy Miller. Portraits. 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 Yes. You know, portraits. interpret it how you will. It's just one word. Portraits. It could be a portrait of. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not giving you any guidance. So let's yep. see. Yeah. And then just, you know, when we just do whatever's different, like, it, you know, whatever we, you would think would be a normal portrait, try to break out of that. Challenge yourself to do something different. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You break out of your box. Do something cool. Yeah, it's all about learning, right? It's all about growth. So yep. that's what we need to do. All yeah, right. Even well, Frederick's going to submit one for portrait. Uh, I may. <laughs> I may. I may. You know, you know, I may. Calling you out. Now that you throw the gauntlet down, I feel like I have to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're going to be a WPPI. There's models everywhere, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Self-portraiture. We could do that. How about some self-portraiture? That would be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be good. Yeah, yeah. I got some ideas. All right, man. Well, let's dive in. What say you? Yeah. We dive into the uh, the latest submissions here. Uh, oh, no. That's not it right there. That's, that's you. Let me bring that. Oh, I restarted my Mac. That's why. Let me bring up. 
Twip Pro here real quick. And there it is. All right, you know what? I could sh share this while I'm doing it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Look at that. Uh, what do you see? Okay, there you go. Yeah, we There's see Twip the Pro. Yeah. yeah, you see Twip Pro? Yep. All right, so let's go in. I'm sharing Google Chrome. So let's go in and... God, these palettes obscure everything on my screen. I hate this. Um, let's go into topics and we're going to go into photo critique and we're going to sort this by date created. This is how we do it. Yep. Oh, look, Mike Doran slipped one in there 30 minutes ago under the radar. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. All right. Well, Not cool. in category, let's... though. So it's the... well, yeah, let's take a look at it. Let's see. All right. He says, Mike says, I had the opportunity to spend the day. Um, as a second shooter during a photo shoot with the Sonoma Race Girls on a cold day, I used the Canon 5D RS and a Canon 7200 2.8L. It was edited in Capture One Pro and Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. Let's see. Mike lives at that at that raceway. I just want to say. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I bet. Yeah. He lives there. He knows every nook and cranny of that place. All right. So keeping in, keeping in mind, does this one fit in our category of... Of emotion and mood, mood and emotion. No, no, I don't think it does. Yeah, I mean, these girls clearly have a mood or emotion on their face, but well, you they, know. Have, they could invoke a mood or emotion, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> they um, definitely could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well done, image. I mean, I like it. I like the composition of it. I wish it was centered, though. It's mm -hmm. there's a lot of space on the right and not as much on the left. It'd be really easy to crop this to to give it that perfect balance. Give them a little tighter. Yeah, and they feel like they're it, it's a it's not level either. Like right. The, it's tilted to the left a little bit. As I mean, you can see there's geometry in the shot, so you can use that as your as but your measure. But he's got his his watermark is 2016. So I think in 2016, off center and tilted slightly was okay. I think. Oh, that, that was, was the thing. thing. That was the thing in yeah. 16. <laughs> that was in. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, kind of like like bell bottoms and all that. <laughs> yeah well good shot though yeah good job. i mean this is a definitely a, a competent pretty shot of a group shot of 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 uh you know beautiful attractive women but not necessarily in our mood or emotion category so right. but not bad not bad i mean but how can you take a bad shot of these subjects <laughs> right. right all smiles all eyes they're all in step it's great good timing yeah yeah yep. very nice very nice all right, moving right along. Tim Ingalls in the house. Mood or emotion. Remember, this is made with the Sigma 85 at three at uh, f3.2 natural light portrait. The IKEA mirror was used for the edge light. That's moody. I like how he has to point out that it's the IKEA mirror, not the of Home course. Depot mirror. Right, <laughs> because they're different, right? Because they they different, reflect yeah. differently, Tim, right? <laughs> <laughs> No. Yeah. Tim, Tim is the MacGyver of photography, you know, he's yeah. I'm surprised he didn't say this is a uh, thrift store Salvation Army mirror that I found. <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> no, this is nice. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at when I was looking at the shot, I was trying to figure out what mood or emotion she has on her face. It's clearly not. You know, it's almost stoic, right? I mean, it's almost a Mona Lisa. Is she smiling? Is she happy? Is she sad kind of look, right? Yes, and you know it's it's always fun to put a story to the image. And to me, I see her as this secret agent, and she has an earpiece in her left ear, and she's just leaning quietly as she's getting dressed to go out, listening to what's going to be happening that day. Be like, okay, mm -hmm. there's going to be three people outside the door with machine guns, and down the hall, you know, <laughs> very <laughs> con very contemplative though. It's a very contemplative look. It is. It is. Yeah. Let's see. I'm rubbing off on you with these kind of weird yeah. stories. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel more comfortable sharing them now. You know, they've always been in there. <laughs> That's right, man. They're, hey, you know, the world is what you make it. You know. Yeah, but no, I, I love I, it. He didn't. He didn't remove too many appendages. I like the fact the whole right arm is in there. Mm -hmm. um, this one would actually look really good cropped really tight. Just keep her left elbow crossed her knee. That mm -hmm. would look good too. Bring it in nice and tight. But I like the reflection in the mirror. So as 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 uh, Tim does, very well done portrait. Yeah. Yeah. I could have swore you were going to say something about that right arm, though. Just kind of dang dangling there. I thought you were going to say, well, he should put some bend it's... in it. Maybe place the hand on her upper thigh or so, or on the chair or something like that. No. 
I mean, if you were doing if you were doing a traditional portrait, looking at the camera kind of thing, but he's he's doing more fashion, and and fashion is really more like that. It's it's much more casual. It's more sort of off kilter. So this fits. This is fine. Yeah. No, I dig it. And in category, Tim Ingle. Thank you, man. All right, Freddie Sedano's in the house. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Triassic terror. Let's see this. <laughs> Freddie's back to his old shenanigans again. I love it. It's very cool. Oh my god! Yeah, that Triceratops does not stand a chance. <laughs> yeah, that poor guy. That poor guy. You never know, though. You never know. No, you know. Look at look at all those guys. No, he's done. He's done. <laughs> he wandered into the wrong hood, man. It's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dude in the back is on him. He's gonna be there in two seconds. So yeah, yeah. He's got the thigh meat. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, so mood and emotion. This is this is terror, which is a mood and an emotion, right? So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Terror and hunger at the same time. Hunger yeah. is a, more of a feeling, not an emotion. But although although it, it, it makes me giggle more than it makes me feel terror. But I, mm -hmm. I get the I get the uh, the parallel. Freddie, I want to see you play around with some stop motion type stuff. That would be really cool with the with the eye and the imagination you have to play around with stop motion, even on the iPhone. iPhone will let you do stop motion, right? Oh, he's done some. Oh, has he done some stop motion? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on, Freddie. Freddie. Come on, on share. You're holding back. You're holding back. I want to see some stop motion stuff. What are you scared, Freddie? <laughs> Ouch. Ow. There you go. What are you scared, McFly? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, gauntlet so they, has been thrown down. The, did you hear that thud? I dropped it like oh, Thor's hammer. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Laura Patton's up next. Um, remember, mood and emotion. Oh, yeah. She says, this photo is part of a documentary I started working on last year of Arlington Cemetery on Memorial Day. I spent time interviewing and getting to know a very personal level, uh, on a very personal level, the families and friends who were visiting Section 60, the area for those killed in the global war on terror since 2001. The families were very open to sharing their stories with me and allowing me to photograph them, paying tribute. In this photo, a child prepares a marine flag for placement on his father's grave, while the background tourists go on with a routine visit to this national memorial. I'll be returning to D.C. this May to continue work on my project and meet with the families once again. Very nice. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can't, you can't really go further with mood and emotion, you know, than this sort of thing. This is by default moody and emotional, right? Right, right. And a lot of black and white treatment, I think that sort of, you know, quiets the, the mood a little bit. You know, we're not seeing the flowers and the color and the green of the grass and everything. And, you know, at first, when I first looked at this, I kind of hesitated with the people in the background. Um, so maybe, maybe yes and no with them. I mean, there's a juxtaposition between, you know, what this little boy's doing, honoring his father, and then these other people in the background just kind of walking around. So it does kind of tell a story. I, I like everything about it. I really do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even without having to hear the story, it, it was very impactful. I mean, you yeah. could see just enough of the flag to know what was going on and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you can you can make the story in your head, you know, without. Yeah. And I, and yeah. I agree with you on the, the people in the background I could do. Yeah, they don't bother me back there, um, but I, I don't know. Would, would it be more powerful without them distracting from the from the kid? I think it would be. I think that <clears throat> I think they draw your eye away, even if it's just for a moment. Mm -hmm. So that's enough to um, take me away from maybe looking at the gravestone or the child's face or something. So ideally, yes, not not major. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, not bad though. Yeah, very, very good. Cool. Very Thank good. you, Laura, for uh, for submitting this. Awesome. And keep us updated yeah. on your project. Doing that I love project. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right, next one is Kai Gratit. <laughs> Grattert and Kai um, and Kai, thank you for coming to the to the member mixers. It's always a pleasure seeing you in there. Um, oh yeah, he calls this one mixed emotions, plenty of emotions in the fighter and observers of a boxing match. Yeah, for sure. Look at this guy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's an intense expression, and and I, I got to say, like the composition of this, uh, I really really love that because you know he's tilted slightly off kilter. Uh, his face is in a clean, his eyes are in a clean line behind him. You know, there's a lot of stuff back there. So that really helps a lot. Plus that leading line that's going across the background just mm. all leads to 
and I just I just dig that. It's just very strong, very yeah. strong. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this one is definitely you could feel the anguish and the exhaustion and just the competition and yeah, yeah, definitely emotional. Remember, you got to you got to keep notes on this, Troy. The uh, which which shot's going to be the winner of this batch, right? Oh, I already know. Oh, you already. Oh, okay. Look yeah, I've already picked one. Yeah, I looked at him earlier. All right, Thomas Aaron's up next. Uh, Thomas says, "Sorry, guys, I'm in the desert in Arizona with two bars on my phone, not enough to tether with my laptop and upload this picture." <laughs> Um, I didn't want to miss out on the mood critique, so I used my iPhone to snap a shot of the image on my laptop screen, and that kind of worked. Look at that ingenuity, mister. Look at that. Yeah. I found this broken memorial being overtaken by a uh, scrub brush on uh, Sentinel Peak overlooking Tucson. It put me in a philosophical and contemplative mood. I'll entitle it Almost Forgotten. All right, Thomas Aaron, what you got for us here? <clears throat> Let's see what this looks like. Look at that. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. But yeah, my brain. You know how our brain wants to fill in blanks? My brain wanted to fill in. What is that? L O P E? And then it goes down and finds the Z, <laughs> right? Look yeah, at yeah. Isn't that yeah. neat? That's just how your brain works. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. this is really well done. Great interpretation of the topic, especially. And at the last minute, too. That's That's really great. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. That, that's yeah. You definitely get E for effort on top of everything else for this shot for for submitting and overcoming the obstacle of not having bandwidth to get it up here. <laughs> right. Right. Love it. Love it. Very cool. Yeah. Good job, Thomas. Yep. T thanks a. for uh, thanks for finding an image to put in. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And a new image at that. Look at that. Uh, I think that was new, right? Uh, Stephen Scharf is up next. Let's see what Stephen says. Venice Beach Noir. Uh, Marlo heard that Sean Regan had seen what? I don't know these names. Um, had been seen in Venice Beach. Maybe Eddie Mars, the chef at Venice Ale House, knew where he was. See, guy, this is like this is chock full of name dropping, and I feel bad. I have no idea who any of these people are. That's right, Steve, right. Well, you know, and it. And it mentioned. And it really isn't significant to the image, to be honest, right? Like the image, we should just be able to see the image and not know whether there's somebody of significance there or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always feel bad when people start name dropping and, and doing that, that, that name thing. I'm like, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about or who they are, but I'll nod and smile in appreciation of what you're saying. <laughs> but I have no idea who these people are. <laughs> but it's right, a nice picture. Right, right. But how does this fit into mood and emotion, Troy Miller? Does it? Well, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't think that it does. I don't see the mood or emotion. I understand the the film noir reference, and I can kind of see that. But it by itself, I'm not quite sure. You know, and maybe mm -hmm. maybe that just says a lot about how we interpret uh, a topic ourselves and what we see in the image. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Stephen may have seen that, or somebody else may see that, but it doesn't relate to me. I I don't I don't see that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see emotion either. I see moody lighting. So it, it, it evokes kind of a, you know, beach town evening, warm California or whatever evening. Um, if you look at it from that sort of does it evoke a sense of place or emotion? It does. But but not in the not in the moody emotion type feel, whereas people right. are in the scene that are emoting some sort of look or something. Right, right. Great shot. I like the treatment. I like the color combination. Oh, the colors are ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. very cool. That's very cool. I always wanted a van like that when I was a kid. I think because of Scooby Doo. I think that's why I wanted. <laughs> you should get one instead of a motorcycle. No, I'm getting a motorcycle. <laughs> no, no. I've gone through. You know what? Now that you bring that, we got to take a slight segue on that. <laughs> so, so I've gone oh, through. No. I've gone through. I've gone through the. Um, the stages of motorcycle contemplation and and i just to put set the stage i have owned a motorcycle sport bike uh you know a uh, uh what was it a honda 600 sport bike bright red of course so i did own that thing a while back but now i've gone through well i'm older now do i really want a sport bike those hurt your back maybe i'll get an upright or a cafe racer or something like that so i've decided i kind of want something that allows me to sit more upright rather than racing. Cause I'm not going to race it. But then I went through the stages of, well, do I want a three wheeler? 
Or do I just want to get a really smart scooter? Because scooters have come a long way. And they're, they can go on the highway, too. <laughs> but I came full circle, and now I'm back to motorcycle. And I, I think I know which one I'm going to get. I'm not going to reveal it yet. I think I know which one I'm going to get. And I'm going to get it within the first half of 20, um, 2019. So that's, that's my digression. I know you didn't want to hear all that, but because <laughs> you're like, I don't care about that. I have a motorcycle in the garage, whatever, dude. <laughs> well, we'll uh, see when you get it. That'll be good. That'll be mm-hmm. good. Yeah, I'm going to get it. I'll write it down there. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Trey Nelson. What's up, Trey? Trey says, and I got to move pellets around. He wrote a lot on this. He says, um, and I'm going to leave this to you guys to read all this. I, I'm not going to read the long, these long captions. But he says, for the theme of mood, I present a shot took years ago in San Francisco that I call Contrasting Lives. So if you want to read the rest of that, actually go to the post. Um, let's take a look at this. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, look at that. I know exactly where he was. I think he was at the, <clears throat> did he say where he was in here? Uh, Union Square. Uh, I think I know where this is. I think this is in um, right across from the MoMA in San Francisco. Yeah, this is classic San Francisco. Though. You got the nerd up there, and then yeah. then what appears to be a homeless person a couple steps lower, right? So it's very yeah. even that evokes the mode. It's kind of there's symbolism there, right? <laughs> so, yep. you, know. I, you know, I really I love the I love the combination here. I wish it was cropped tighter, though. Um, I really think uh, take some bottom off and the right hand side come in really tight. So those boots are in the lower right hand corner. So you really have like three subjects, right? You have like the, the kid in the upper left corner smoking a cigarette, reading a book. You got the the homeless guy in the middle and then his boots, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, it just tells it, yeah, it tells a wonderful story. You've got like three subjects with a main hook right there in the middle. I love his hand. You know, it's just sitting there with his shoes off. I, I, I dig it. It's a it's a great capture. It's a really good, really good image. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you because your eye, like we say, your eye always goes to the brightest part of the image, right? So where yeah. my eye goes over and wants to read stuff. So if there's letters in there and it's bright your eyes are going to go straight to it so my eye goes right over to that do on the right side of the screen yeah which adds nothing to the image of course could easily been cropped out yeah but i gotta i gotta give trey some some very clever credit uh did you did you see his uh his watermark down at the bottom there see what he did yes yep it's three eyes three eyes nelson trey get it trey get it (laughs) (laughs) clever clever man you clever man Love it. Very cool. Thank you, Trey, for that. All right. Next shot up is from Armando Bruck. And Armando says, wow, look at that. He says, uh, this is my first group photo walk in India. Normally, uh, I normally not like to photograph. And if I photograph, I he doesn't like to show photos of people. And oh, in the vulnerability of, vulnerability of the situation. In this case, he was able to help this man and uh represent a small image part of my experience and and love of living in india for four years was the people but i cannot forget the poor situation and it is not just money or food yeah yeah there's india is known for just sort of that that big black line between classes right right it's like poor and not poor right so and if you're poor you're poor poor and if you're not poor you're doing okay but yeah, look at the wow. shot though. Look at that. I mean, the hand, the eyes, the processing, the bokeh. I mean, you could almost feel the grit. You know, it's just yeah. This is this is, and even the crop, the square crop. Not yeah. Bad. No, it's it's. I'm just the more that I look at it. I mean, I'm really drawn into you know that subject to eyes and just the ruggedness of his face and how he's not looking straight at the camera. I like that. It's like he's mm-hmm. he's just sort of like he's doing what he wants to do and 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 he's just being there and <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it's it's very powerful. I mean, it's just a, a lot to look at. I would suggest <clears throat> Armando that that you do some uh, burning 
of that highlight on the right hand side, camera right or left of your subject, because it's definitely going to draw away from his face. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. a little bit. And, and I realize, you know, it's a small thing, but I think that it's detracting. The bright spot is detracting from his face, especially because he has such a dark complexion. Mm -hmm. It's always going <clears> to <throat> it's always going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But powerful but nice image. Crop, great treatment. Oh, yeah. He, These are yeah. all powerful. These are all mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Yeah. And what a way to play into the theme as well. Very cool. All right. Thank you, Armando. Uh, next up is Craig Stamfley. Craig says, Daddy is home. Uh, shot last year. I spent a few hours with this family trying to be an unobtrusive six foot three fly on the wall. Isaac was very happy to see his dad walk in the door. Yeah, I, six foot three. <laughs> you know, you're not a fly on the wall. That's, a, that's an alligator right. or something on the wall. <clears throat> right, <clears throat> right. Right. Yep. So emotion. What do you think? I, I, I have some ideas of what you're going to say. Anyway. No, I think it's great emotion. I think it's I think it's fantastic. I think that, uh, you know, these type of shots, um, it's always about timing, you know, because I see this at weddings all the time, people hugging or making eye contact or whatever. And it's always super hard to get the perfect timing where you get both faces, the eyes connect and you know that this this is great because you can see the child's face. So that really makes it work. I wish we could see dad's. But mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. 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 Very cute shot there. Yeah. I would probably crop it tighter, uh, get rid of the door, clone out the switch on the wall, uh, leave a little bit of the sofa in the bottom and on the left, but not not too much. I wouldn't crop out the portraits, but I would I would crop close. Yeah. Yeah. I understand why he left that. I mean, there, I think there's too much couch or whatever that item of furniture is in the foreground. Um, but I understand what he was trying to do. He's trying to go for that right. voyeuristic sort of, like he said, fly on the wall look. So. Right. Right. I, I think there's just too much distracting element. Maybe maybe leaving it cropped this way and doing some more dodging and burning might help. Mm -hmm. maybe a bit to more draw your eye in. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that. Maybe that. Definitely get rid of the door and the switch. I was going to say at least the switch, yeah, because that's like yeah. one <laughs> click, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Craig Stanfley, thank you, man. Daddy's home. Next shot is from Mark Harris for the mood or emotion topic. Model uh, Gazelle Powers, one studio strobe with a grid, vi white vinyl backdrop shot with his Nikon, Nikon D850 with his Zeiss 50 millimeter F14, racked out to F8. ISO 200 at 1 one twenty fifth of a second. Yeah, that's moody for sure. Yeah, I love these. Yeah, this is this is really great. I can see the the background across the top. I can see where it stops. Um, mm, mm -hmm. So so for me, this type of image. I mean, I, I love the image. I love the story. I love the the pose, the composition of the image. I'm not a big fan of the white spotlight on the floor and being able to see the wrinkles in the background. And this is an image that you could take to pure black and just allow the highlights on the front side of her skin to stand out to show your your subject. And it would be almost an abstract. Uh, but because she's got that dark skin, I think you could just push this all the way down, burn in that highlight on the floor. It would just become very mysterious. Yeah. 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 I agree. You know, subject matter wise, <clears throat> I like these kind of shots. The, when, when you do these sort of artistic nude shots that don't show anything, you know, I think mm -hmm. these are much more powerful than the more graphic shots that are, you know, not safe for work or whatever, still artistic. But for me, the, the black and white interpretation of showing just the human form, then evoking some sense of emotion, you know, makes right. the makes the nakedness of the subject even more secondary or tertiary than than if right. it was just a, hey, look at this naked person. Now, what is this naked person doing? It's more about what's going on. Is this a is this an illustration for, you know, a battered spouse or, you know, someone who lost a child or something like that. And that's where my mind goes initially versus right. look at this naked person, you know? Right. Right. No, I, I agree. And, and, you know, being able to represent grief and things like that, you know, a lot of that depression and grief and sorrow and that all that is a sort of a private suffering kind of thing. And, um, there's, there's really no external additions that kind of help that. Mm -hmm. So these kind of images are very powerful in that sense. And I think that he captured that really well here. So my suggestions are just interpretive of this, of how I would do this shot. And not technical. so much. Yeah. Technical, not so much saying that this is wrong or anything, but, um, 
these are very moodful. So Mark did a fantastic job in yeah. in uh, presenting this. I love it. I yeah, agree. I really do. I agree. How far we've come with the work in this group, man. It's, it's I know. Impressive. Uh, next up is Andy S. Andy says, uh, one of the most amazing creatures we see in the garden is the beautiful butterfly. I don't think this one is in our category. No, but it's, I mean, but it's beautiful. Yeah, relatively beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very nice. I, I would say that the vignetting is a bit um, uh, too centered, right? Mm. Because it's it really needs to, we need to see more of the butterfly. I think just highlighting just the flower at that contact point feels a little eh, off center. Yeah. But yeah. No, I like, this is a beautiful shot. This is definitely, like we, we used to say in the beginning, this is definitely wall worthy, right? You could print this oh, big yeah. and hang in the wall, especially if there's a series of them. That'd be amazing. But I tell you, you did, Troy, here's a, here's a little trivia tip or trivia about Frederick Van Johnson. I used to be deathly afraid of butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> a what, because just last year. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, see, still now, I think they're I think they're evil. But uh, <laughs> but, but you see, like even in this shot, you look at them close up. Especially a moth, you know. You look at these things close oh, up; they yeah, are not yeah. cute. These are monsters, and I think what solidified it is my brother and I used to watch those uh, those Godzilla movies, and Mothra oh, was in there. Mothra. You know, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, these are just little mini Mothras flying around terrorizing people. <laughs> That's awesome. That is amazing. All right. So everybody, uh, next week we're gonna do butterflies. No. <laughs> hey, I got raid here. I'm good. <laughs> All right, good shot. Thank you, Andy, for submitting that. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Uh, Howard Yermish is up next. He says, a little mood from Kelly. Let's take a look at that one. Yep, there you go. That's great. That is really great. That is so cool. Yep, the motion. And I love, you know what? I don't know. Something about black backgrounds that gets me. When it, yeah. There's just a black background that goes, even like black backgrounds with one light. There's something about that combination that I just, you know, is in and in good model, you know, a good subject in the front, even if it's a portrait or a family or something. Something about this the stark, mysterious black background with a subject emerging out of it gets me. Yeah. No, I, I love it. I love it. And you know, what's neat about this image is that the light is hitting her face, which is, you know, she's closer to that light, so that's brighter, which draws our attention there first. And the, so the composition, the angle of her body is fantastic. Um, my, my only suggestion for this image is to bring the overall exposure way down. Bring it down for her face and so that her face is, is a little bit on the dark side, and I think you're going to increase that mood dramatically because then it's going to fall off of her chest and, um, you know, make it more mysterious, maybe more noir, if you will. But I love what's going on here. This you don't really you don't cool. think this shot needs to be black and white, Troy Miller? Um, I think. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't I think resist. That, yeah. Don't resist your inner desires, man. Come on, you know you want it to be black and white. <laughs> I'm debating. You know, honestly, I looked at it and I thought, you know, if it went black and white, we wouldn't get to see her fiery red hair, which right. I like that. So I think yeah. that if it was brought way down, if the exposure was brought way down, I think we would sort of get that monochromatic feel from it because it would be her face mostly. And then the rest of her body would just kind of fall off in that. Yeah. In that. I think I think that would work. Yeah, I got you. I so agree. Everything, everything should be black and white. <laughs> right? I care what would you ask for? You're going to wake up colorblind and you're like, oh, what did I say, universe? I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I could. I, I got some friends that are colorblind and they're pretty freaking good photographers. I know. I got some too. Not. Yeah. Who's who's colorblind? Um, Trey Radcliffe, I believe, is colorblind. Yeah. I want to yeah, say he's colorblind. Yeah. To, and you're not, I mean... Yeah, or I would say color desensitized to certain certain kinds of colors. You can't see them, right? Yeah. Or like like the majority of the population can. I don't think there's a right and wrong. It's just like you can't see like the majority of the population. Um, this shot is from Michael Rhino. What's up, Michael Rhino? He says, this is a photo from this past Monday morning. The mood and cool tones were provided 
uh, early morning snow and seven degree temperature. Ugh. Well, the expression says to me that he's ready for an end to winter or that you look like lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is well, his Nikon D850 with a Tamron 7200 millimeter lens, um, uh, F28 ISO 200 with a 180th of a second shutter speed. Let's bring that up. Look at that. Bison. Yeah, that just makes me cold. That's just what that does. <laughs> well, he's got he's got his jacket on. He went to you know the Burlington Coat Factory. He got hooked up. <laughs> so, yeah. Look yeah. at that though. That is uh, these things are just gigantic. I got a chance to see some bison in person in not in person but in I guess in bison when I was in Colorado once, and uh, I think I saw some buffalo in at Yellowstone as well. And these are just gigantic gigantic mammals it is just crazy this one looks like he's making direct eye contact with the camera as well right yeah yeah i don't know yeah the and they are huge creatures so no this is really great i i would probably crop off the right side a little bit <clears throat> so that you know that dead space isn't really doing anything for yeah, us his, but... so his face is in the middle right well yeah or not, off to not... the right or on the rule of thirds on the right side more yeah 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 it feels a little bit odd cropped but I love the fact you can see the snow in the background that you can yeah. clearly see the bison's eye, which is nice, you know. So he's definitely watching you. So, yeah, yeah that's no. good. Yep, definitely. Love it. All right. Michael Rhino, thank you so much for the bison. The moody bison. Michael DeRay is up next. And Michael says, depression is no laughing matter. I've battled with bouts of depression my whole life. I found that doing something creative when it hits seems beneficial, beneficial to my well-being. This is a self-portrait that I took a while ago during one of these bouts. He shot this with his Pentax. Mamiya Secor 50 millimeter at F2 with a single 50 watt bulb for lighting. Wow. Yeah, what a way to channel it, right? Yeah. No, it, it's it's an incredibly <clears throat> powerful image, and it's just it's not only is it incredibly powerful, but um, it's extremely well done in the sense that you can look at this image, you're drawn right into the highlight of his face, right to his eyes, uh, the composition, the the use of negative space, um, the color. You don't need you don't need a description to know that that, that there is something challenging going on in this subject's mind. And I think that that's amazing. I think that's what, what tells the story. Mm -hmm. And I love the processing of this too, because it's it, it's almost it's almost metallic, you know, right. in, in the overall like coppery metallic, and but not overly contrasty because there's still de detail in the highlights in there. So yeah, right. from, a, from a technical <clears throat> standpoint, uh, I love the processing of this. I love the single light, the bare bulb, uh, and, and we already established that I like black backgrounds. So yeah, <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it hits on those levels, and then from did he hit the nail on the head with subject matter wise? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Like you said, this is, this is illustrative of, you know, being quote normal on the left side and then have something going on on the right side of this model. So, right. No, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a fantastic storytelling. And even before I read the caption, um, I was really drawn to this image. This is an image that, that, you know, I, th I think a lot of, people can relate to just emotionally you know when you see that you're like okay you know mm -hmm. i felt like i'm there i've been there i'm close to there or it represents something yeah yeah no for sure for sure all right michael duray thank you so much man and thanks for sharing that yeah um sure. next sure. shot uh, i think we have one left right joshua summerfeld here right i think so yeah mm-hmm yeah Oh, we so, did this one last time. <clears throat> did we do this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. You know what? Maybe not. You know no, what? I, think I don't I, think we did this one. I remember one. reading it. No, you're right. Yeah, I mean, we've seen... Yeah, I get in the same way because I'm like, yeah. I, I look at these in the community. I'm like, did we talk about this? Um, yeah. So, uh, is this one? So, Joshua says, was trying to shoot long exposures in the river when this presumably father and son walked out uh, and set up right in front of me. I was annoyed, but they did give me a moment. So I, ins instead of storming off, I creepily photographed them from the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Stalker. I rarely title my images, but I call this one unplugged because it reminds me of a time before smartphones, etc., when families would just enjoy each other and the outdoors. He shot this with his Canon EOS 
1300D, which is also known as a Rebel T6, with a Canon EF 75 to 300 millimeter f4 to 5.6 lens on it, racked out to 75 millimeter um, at f4 for 200th, uh, 1 200th of a second at ISO 100. Let's just bring that up. Yeah, yeah, it's a very, it's a very cool shot. Um, there it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me, I would crop out, we'll, we'll call it the dad. I would crop out the dad in the chair. So crop down from the top a little bit, crop off just to the right side of the chair. So it's just a horizontal with the kid in the far right hand corner. So you'd lose the dad. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I don't, so just I don't have the emotion of the kid sitting there with his little mini yep. fishing pole hanging out. Yep. Yep. His head's kind of down a little bit. He's not really holding his pole out there. He's just, he's kind of chilling by himself. I think to me that would make this image much more powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the shot. I think it's a really great shot, but you know, they're not interacting. So I don't see that, that connection, but the kid, just the kid by himself to me is just really cool. You know, what you could do, and I wouldn't suggest this, but um, I've, I had a shot once that was kind of like this where I had two subjects and they were just a little bit too far away to evoke the motion of them being together <laughs> in content aware scale. Have scale. you ever done that? Yeah. Where you could just yes, I have. bring them together, man, and, it, and let the computer figure out the rest. And now they're they're within, you know, reaching distance of each other. So. Yeah, it works pretty good. Mm hmm. Yep, it does. All right, Joshua Sommerfeld, thank you for that one. Emotion. All right. Yep. So what do we got here, Troy Miller? What are your thoughts on well, uh, on the, the one that most fits? Let's, so let's, let's call it. So it has got, most fits the category of mood and emotion and also is, is technically executed well. What, what, where do you fall? Ooh, I, I think you should go first because I have two. So I kind of want to see. I How are you going to have two, man? How are you going to have two? There's more than two, but but two that really rise above for me. Um, yeah. And I'll I'll tell you the one the one the one is Armando Brooks, of the guy from India, mm -hmm. and then the other one is Michael Rhinos. So between those two, I have a really I have a really hard struggle. I think for me they're both executed hey, find, super well. Let me find Michael Rhinos real quick. I think bring that one. Yeah, up. he's just down there a little bit further down. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. The you, the Buffalo? No, no. Uh, did oh, you, I say Michael? you meant Michael Duray. Oh, Michael Duray. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm not, yeah, I was going off of memory. Yeah, Michael Duray. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, Michael. I see. And Michael Reynolds, like right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Duray's. Yeah. And and I think that if I just if I didn't know any stories, I would really have a hard time struggling. I would probably go with Michael Duray's, being it's a setup shot, knowing that it's a studio, mm -hmm. but knowing the story. Um, behind Michael's really just draws me to that image slightly so this more one, than this the other your one. this one's your winner? I think I'm talking myself into it, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and when I go back to I'd Armando's to shot, Armando's shot just, it just slaps me over the head with National Geographic. I can see a National Geographic logo in the bottom right-hand corner yeah. of the shot, and it just, yeah. you know, because it's, yeah. it's emotional. I think this one, um, you know, the Michael's shot, evokes the you know the emotion of depression of you know which is obviously well, i mean we've done whole shows on that right so right it, right. it, evo it, it evokes by nature that feeling this one i look at and i think of a uh, a the whole culture of of just oppression right. i don't want to say oppression but at least depression right over there in india with this with the with the stark line between the haves and the have nots over there then this one is almost illustrative of that you know i mean you could almost put text on this that just says india and people would instantly get it yeah right? yeah yeah and you could I you could just oppose it with a shot of someone that's <laughs> affluent you know right next to it and just say hey you know this is india yeah i'm very torn i mean i could go either way on those so you i think you're gonna have have to be the tiebreaker for me. You're gonna. Have why to, are you gonna throw it on me? <laughs> you're gonna have well, to move me one way. Why are you gonna throw no, it? No, I say I think it's. I, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm. Either one of those, as as we've agreed, are super powerful. I think that, uh, I think that you can you can break the tie. Okay, right, you know what I'll do? Uh, because I am, uh, you know, I believe in the crowdsourcing this stuff. 
People that are in Twit Pro, you see this little heart right here in the bottom? <laughs> oh, what a cop out. Yes, that's 100% a cop out. I'm using the tools, man. So why don't you guys go in and tell us which of these two, if these are the two front runners, and Troy and I are, are you know, this very rarely happens, but we are, you know, we are locking horns on this one. I think it should be this one. Troy thinks it should be the other one. Um, let me bring that one up. Troy is a fan of Michael DeRay's, which I also look, think is fantastic as well. Um, but if you go in and tell us which ones you like, vote with your hearts, literally. Yeah, you know? that's cool. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Vote with the heart and let us know. And before the next critique, which is next week, uh, hopefully we survive Vegas. Next week, we will just basically, it'll be binary unless it's a tie, you know, and then, of course, an algebra. Then we'll pick. <laughs> then we'll pick. But, yeah, go in and pick one and let us know what you think. And, uh, yeah, it's up to you, community. You pick That's the right great. one. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Um, I think that's it, right? So we, we got through all of the... We got through all of the submissions this week. So next week's next yeah. week's topic is, like you said, is going to be portraits. Portrait, yeah. but don't just submit some Olin Mills mall portrait and call it a day. Be creative with your portrait. Think outside the box. Portrait is a broad category. It could, you know, a portrait has a toe in fashion. It has a toe in street photography, has a toe in weddings. I mean, it's all over the place. So, and as right, you could, you could do whatever you want, right, Troy? Yeah. Whatever you want, whatever you want, interpret it however you like, be creative. Well, they're, they're going to be creative. I mean, they're an amazing community. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's wrap this one up. I know you're itching to get out there and hit the streets and, you know, you know, accumulate those flyers that people hand out to you (laughs) as you're walking down the strip. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I gotta go. I gotta go get my drink on. There you go. Yeah. Well, save some room for me. I'm there tomorrow. So we gotta. Remember, I told you I'm gonna. I'm, I'm benevolent and going to allow you to buy me a drink tomorrow. So. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, okay. So before we break this off, what are your what are your main goals for WPPI? What are, what's the main takeaway? Why are you there? Why did you leave beautiful, comfortable, the cocoon of Southern California to go to the desert to hang out in Vegas? uh one it's a vacation it's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a break for me it's it's an opportunity for me to sort of get away from my desk and stuff which which i need that and it's another time for me to hang out and be completely saturated in photography for a week mm-hmm. so yes there's a trade show yes there's education and stuff going on but for me i'm really going to meet people i'm going to get to talk to my vendors and it's photography 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 yeah and and the cool thing is that if you see somebody else with a wppi badge they're, they're like, everybody's totally open to talking. Like, doesn't matter where they are in line or dinner. So I just love that. So that's, that's for me, it's community and hangout and meeting new people and socializing. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Same here for me. You know, it's just, it's, and Vegas is so close, right? So it's like, for me, yeah. it's, it's less than an hour flight, maybe a little bit more. And I'm literally from my garage to throwing my bags in the room is under 90 minutes. So you know, you yeah, gotta, you kind of yeah. got and it. I drive. I drove and it takes me three hours. Oh, wow. So. Well, it's not bad. I mean, you know, that's not too bad. It's a nice drive, too. It's no. nice and beautiful and scenic. Yeah, no, it's nice. Yeah, it's a good break. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. All right, man. Well, I think that's it. I'll let you get back to it. Um, and uh, yeah, do some do some recon. Get ready for for me. I got a text. I got a text from uh, from Christopher Barry while we were recording this, saying, "Where oh. are you guys at?" <laughs> 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 so, Chris, I'm still in California. Troy Miller is in Vegas in his uh, his penthouse hotel up there. So that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Connect. Cool. All right, man. All right, you enjoy yourself, and I'll uh, I'll see you in a couple hours. All right, you got it. Take care. All See right. ya. Peace. This is Twitter.